it going all right so an easier session than the last one which was quite the marathon 
um, relatively straightforward poses, or at least some of them, but I think they'll be really interesting. So, yeah, let's get cracking. Start with a... What will we start with? We'll start with a... I'm going to say 10 to 15. Let's see how it goes, depending on how quickly how quickly the drawing goes. All right, let's uh, let's give it a go. Let me change camera and uh, let me hit the timer. All right, I'm here for the rents and a little art. Yeah, that's about right. We'll try and we'll try and do both. The rants will come if the questions come. Because you know what I'm like. I can't I can't resist. Um, really wanna push push the overall kind of dynamics of this. This hand arm is coming kind of up this way. And across. Obviously, this is a back pose for those of you who have the reference. So let's uh, let's find our spine. We're doing something like that, right? Sacrum sitting about here. You can actually see the sacrum sacral dimples here and here really quite clearly. Okay, um, the right leg is the supporting leg, which is why the pelvis is kind of tilting in this direction. Even though it's going forward, so we'll just kind of indicate it very roughly like that. And then obviously this other leg is coming towards us, which is kind of, at least for us, kind of the more interesting of the two legs in some ways. Um, Okay, so sacrum, iliac crest is coming up. You can actually kind of see where the oblique is sitting and the iliac crest is kind of coming up this way. We'll find a butterfly motif sitting in there and there. Okay. So the rib cage is sitting, sitting about here, right? Somewhere in there. Scapula, which was the topic of great discussion last time, sitting here. And you can see that a chromium process that we discussed before, you can see that dimple, that dent sitting right about there, right? Same on the other side. Now the other arm is kind of going forwards. This one's kind of horizontal to us. The other arm is kind of going forward, so the scapula is sitting more on the side of the form. It's kind of sitting out here. Something like that. Okay, that will get us at least to the next stage. Let's keep going. Occipital ridge is sitting about here. Trapezius coming down like so. And then that deltoid is sitting in there. This one. Kind of see that sitting in there. This arm tricep coming up to the elbow. Deltoid 
and then the bicep sing in there. her hair out this way, about like something like that. I kind of get to see a hint of that trapezius, you just get to see the shadow of it there. Same on this side, you kind of see that in there lower lumbar muscles sitting in this region. Okay, that will get us where we need to go. So coming off the rib cage, oblique is coming down this way. Then we can see this leg is kind of coming towards us ever so slightly. And then we've got the overlap of the calf sitting in here. This leg here going down like so. All right. So rib cage coming down this way, you can see that oblique, and then we just get just a hint of the the breast sitting in here, something like that. Which is this arm? It's maybe a little high. Well, maybe not actually, let's see. So then we can see there's a little bit of that scapula coming down this way, transitioning to the rib cage, into the oblique. Let's come across the form, do the same thing. So we've got the oblique. There's more extension on this side, it's a bit more of a stretch. rib cage then coming under the scapula and then the deltoid something like that coming 
down to the widest part of the leg there. Where are we at? Nine minutes. Yeah, I think we'll probably go to closer to 15 here. We've got the gluteus sitting in here. I think if, if, if what I think you're talking about is correct, then I, I can certainly shed some light on that. Um, let me just continue here for a sec. tendon. Oh, you can't even see that. Okay. So basically what's going on there is that we have basically a kind of a thinning out in this area here of the trapezius and it's at this point right here that we actually see a vertebra um, we see two vertebra mainly in that area which is C7 and T1 cervical 7 and thoracic 1 which are the where the um, vertebra of the neck um, connect with the vertebra of the rib cage so yeah, we get this thinning out um, in this region, right in this triangle right here. Um, and that's what creates that light um, or the shadow um, as it moves across, as the light moves across the form or you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, that's essentially what's creating that. So with that in mind, you know, we've got, we do have a secondary light source coming from this direction, which I'm going to kind of ignore. Um, so with, with that said, you know, we can see tone sitting in here, right? And then kind of coming down this way, doing this type of thing in this area. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, let's find. Some of our half tone that's sitting in here. This is all in tone. So then as we come across lights coming from this direction, Kind of keep reminding myself of that. Um, so we've got a cast shadow here, or core shadow, sorry, as the form turns going into reflected light down here and then into the cast shadow, which is heavier sitting in there. Then on this side, get this type of thing going on. Something like that. Oh, 
All right, I think that will pretty much do it for this one. Give it a little, a little blend. I think we'll call it on that one. It's 15. All right. You know, when I look at it now, which, you know, always looking on the camera or seeing the view that you guys see, this feels a bit disjointed to me. This should probably be about here. Something like that. And actually, I think this could probably afford to be more in this direction. Yeah, it feels a little better. Okay, next pose. T2 says, if you can discuss how the shoulders connect, have trouble with shoulders and elbows. And hello all. Um, how shoulders connect. Well, really what we, you know, we, we touched on this actually last time, T2, um, about this, you know, what we're basically dealing with, with how the shoulders, the deltoid, connects to the torso. It's um, basically what's called the shoulder girdle, and it comprises of the clavicles, right? Um, and also the scapula, the shoulder blades and the collarbones, right? And they kind of meet up in a V um, with what's called the acromion process. So if we think about it, do a real quick demo. Let's say that's the rib cage. We'll just pretend this is like a back view. So imagine this arm is kind of, well actually let's get in a rib cage. something like that, right? There's the occipital ridge back here, trapezius coming down this way. Let's say this arm is kind of going up this way, just for the sake of the conversation. The scapula is going to be sitting somewhere like, something like this, right? Because the arm is going up. At rest, it's probably more kind of like this, right? But this arm's going up. So basically the, the, the deltoid, the shoulder muscle, connects at the clavicle and at the scapula at the back, right? Um, but you can think about it, you know, if we just put in a mass for the deltoid, the, 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 the deltoid is attaching, there's three heads, three main heads to the deltoid, and one head is attaching to the spine of the scapula. So it's kind of coming like this. And then the other, the front head is attached to the clavicle, which we obviously can't see, but imagine like the clavicle's coming up this way, right? We're transparent. And that's attaching like that. And then obviously the bicep and the tricep and that are coming up this way. And then obviously into our, um, our forearm. So at the, on the scapula, there's this little thing, coracoid, oh, not coracoid process. Um, God, just, the name has just gone right out of my mind. Okay, you get the dimple, right? I don't know why I'm, I'm blanking on that. Um, and that's the end of the scapula, right there, okay? Then you've also got the trapezius, which will be kind of bunching up slightly on this side, right? As it kind of comes to here and then up this way. Um, so you could think of it like this type of thing, right? 
and then you've got the trapezius which comes down obviously down this way doing something like that that's basically a very crude demo but that's basically what's going on uh, yes yeah, sometimes how it's connecting into the back um, when above head muscle wise hopefully that explains hopefully that it helps explain it um, T2 let me know how's the tea today tea is very good thank you yes fresh cup bag still in it there you go all right let's move on to the next pose um, Tito, I would, I would thoroughly recommend, you know, if you don't already have it, like look online or have a look at some, um, some reference, some anatomy reference of, of the, the shoulder blade, the scapula, the acromion process, sorry, now it comes to me, um, the acromion process and then the clavicle and look at how that all kind of connects. Also, if you go back to last, last, the last stream, what, Monday, just zoom along probably about two-thirds of the way through I talk about this there as well and I do a head up down view where you can see the cl the relationship between the the, um, the clavicle and the scapula that might be useful all right let's move on to next pose okay this is a fun one so it's a front standing pose but we are almost at eye level Oh, sorry, the feet are almost at eye level, so we're looking up at the form. So the trick with this one, it really is about getting our proportions right to get the illusion. So she doesn't look like she just has super long legs, right? We get the illusion of the camera um, space. Any chance of going over the specifics of the elbow at some point too? Yeah, we can. Like, what I would say about the elbow is it really depends where, what angle. I, I, well, we're talking about the elbow region. Are we talking about it from the front or from the back? Because they have, obviously there's different things that are in view. We can certainly discuss it. Once again, I think you'll do, you'll do very well looking at an anatomy book or anatomy reference on how the, the the tricep comes down the fascia connects down at the elbow and how the muscles of the forearm overlap that and attach to the humerus and you can see that you can see that relationship if we have a view where it's pertinent i'll certainly bring it back up all right um okay let's let's map our Oh, I should reset the clock. Okay, let's map our proportions first here. So, we've also got, you know, this great rhythmical idea. I talk about a hip push, right? Hips pushing up this way. something like that and then this leg is really pushing down like so really a lot of dynamics in this pose um, let's find our center line it's going to be somewhere in there can see the aces very, very clearly, right? The, the, the point uh, um, where the iliac crest comes to an end, we can see a point here, and we can see a point about here. And uh, we have the inguinal ligament coming down to the pubic bone about here and here, something like that. And then this leg is really kind of pushing to walk, coming towards us, right? Doing that. Knee is probably about here. Obviously, I'm not going to be drawing the lower leg too far down. Um, 
but you get the idea. Something like so. Um, yeah, so Iliac Crest coming up this way. Same on this side. So this is where the, kind of some of that foreshortening is going to display itself is Arch of the rib cage starts really quite high. Starts about here and comes down this way. Um, Camille asks, would you recommend apps or sites where you can check out how muscles move and contracts? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so, I believe there are sites out there that, that cover this type of thing. Um, I use an app, but here's the thing. I haven't seen the new version of this app. For, from what I understand, it covers like the contraction and uh, um, you know expansion of muscles. Uh, I use an app on the iPad called Essential Anatomy. I think it's at five now. Um, Essential. Uh, mine is I think Essential Anatomy four, I believe. Um, but it's a fantastic app. And I believe that the, the advanced, the new app, will literally let you move body parts and let you see the, um, the contraction um, or the extension of the muscle. So I would check that out. And as I said, I'm sure that there are sites that deal with this as well, but I'm not kind of, I'm not at that point anymore where I'm really in the market, if you know what I mean. So I don't kind of keep up with it. You can see the scapula sitting right there. This is obviously the deltoid, what will be the mass of the deltoid coming up this way. Um, then the clavicle going down this way. The head of the humerus is going to be about here. This arm is doing something like this. This one's coming back this way can see that pectoral muscle pull down this way. Actually get a peak of it right about there too. Um, mass of the breast is sitting about here. Once again it's sitting on top of that form, right? Of the rib cage. So we want to be thinking about that as a shape in its own right, a mass rather than a shape, sorry, a mass sitting on top of another mass, right? We want to think like, we really want to be trying to think like sculptors. Susan says, just want to say thank you, never been able to draw figures. We came across your videos this week and already seen progress. That's fantastic, brilliant, good stuff. So glad. Um, Okay, so the mass of this breast is sitting about here. And once again, I'm thinking of it as a volume, not just a shape, right? I will tweak that as needed. I'm just still very much at the overall proportion stage, halfway between the bottom of the rib cage and the top of the iliac crest. We've got the navel sitting about here. That's coming down this way. And we can see from the rib cage coming down this way, and we come into the long journey of the oblique, then coming down, sitting here, meeting up at the aces. Um, with the tensor fascia latte coming down this way. And then we're coming down to the hip, down here. Oh, yeah, our music's done, huh? Sorry. Let me find a... Okay. 
Let's keep going. Something like that. Let's deal with this other leg too. Um, so we're coming off the rib cage, coming down, oblique sitting in here. That will continue down that way. And coming down to the hip. My lower torso is about here. And then this leg is kind of going away from us. It's going in this direction. And the knee probably about there. Um, oblique is going to be sitting in here and here, which helps subdivide the abdominal wall from um, subdivide the abdominal wall from you know the the oblique and that. Um, okay. You can see, like, you can start to get a sense of where our horizon line is, right, which is down by her feet. I actually think I can probably push this even more. I haven't drawn the full figure, so you may not get quite the illusion um, of, the, uh, of the perspective, but let's see. Um, okay, so deltoid, tricep. Lucas, there's some strength training websites have good diagrams of flex muscles yeah yeah i'm sure there's strength and conditioning and physiotherapy reference and all of that type of thing that would have good resources you know ah lucas so lucas you've been emailing me i've, I've seen all the, i've seen your emails i know i haven't replied to them all um but I have seen them. So here's the thing. What's it going to take to convince you to start working in charcoal? Because I think you've made great progress with working on the iPad. But I also, it's my belief that it is going to restrict a certain aspect of your development. So as you're here, and I was actually planning on messaging you and telling you, telling you as such, um, I think that you, there is something to working with charcoal specifically that will bring an another level of dynamics and play into your work, which you're simply going to have a really, really hard time, if ever, achieving um, on the iPad. And you've been doing this a while, you're clearly, you're clearly very dedicated, and you're clearly improving, which is great to see, but I'm just going to throw out that bit of free advice so do with it what you will I'm not saying you have to follow it but my advice would be get off the iPad and start to uh, start to work in charcoal okay I think there's a tendency, especially, you know, if you work in, if you work in art, you know, in games or that type of thing for a living, and you work on a digital platform, like Photoshop or Procreate or any one of those, there's this tendency to think that you've got to do everything in that particular piece of software. Um, 
the, the irony being is your digital work will actually get better if you're prepared to use more analog for your development and training. So, yeah, just want to throw that out there. It's like people that learn to paint digitally, which I think personally is not a great strategy. Um, there's whole aspects of the process of painting that you're going to ultimately shortchange yourself on by only working digitally. Um, I would strongly recommend people that are learning, especially those who are starting out their journey. Yeah, I know that these tools are very impressive, but there's huge aspects, as I said, of development that you're going to miss out on. Um, so, yeah. So, tricep. Yeah, please do. I think you'll uh, you'll be glad you did, Lucas. I always find it very strange when people say they don't have room for traditional materials. It's like I'm not saying this is your in your case, but I've, I've heard people say that I don't have room. It's like. A board and some paper does not take up much room, you know? Okay, so can't really see it. Sartorius is coming across the form this way. But what we can see is the way that it subdivides the leg there. Where are we at? 14 minutes already. Gosh. All right. Um, same thing. Sartorius. It's coming down this way. smudge marks everywhere. That's the reason. The whole point is the smudge marks. <laughs> no, look, we all get dirty drawings. It can happen, especially if you're working with a 6B like this. Um, yeah, it gets dirty. But with that dirt, comes the potential for incredible expressiveness, right? So it's a trade-off. Um, yes, you'll have dirtier drawings, at least initially. But that's OK. Just very, very lightly indicating some some sh core shadows here. Um, got a cast shadow coming in here. going to belabor this too much. I want to move on to the next pose, but we'll just kind of indicate a little bit of tone because once again, it's just really useful um, to help describe form.
All right. I think I'm bored with this drawing. It's not going anywhere, so I'm going to move on. Kind of got the overall gist of it. Not crazy about it, but I think that's long enough. Um, Laurie says, I think you're absolutely right about digital painting. It is a media like oil, gouache, pastel, and acrylic, but definitely the one you should start with. I've tried that. Shouldn't start with. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, and also I think that there's, well, there's a few things that need to be, you need to be mindful of with digital painting, is you're not going to really get a full sense of the relationships of how colors mix and color harmony, um, or it's going to, the journey's going to be a lot longer than sitting with two different colors, mixing them together, seeing those relationships and how they interact together, right? You're going to get a much faster. You're going to build a much faster sense of, um, yeah, uh, color and, and it, its relationship. Um, also, the other thing that you have to keep in mind with digital painting is essentially everything is backlit, right? You're not you're not painting in the same way like you are against the surface, right? Which the illumination is coming from above or whatever. In digital painting, the illumination's coming from behind, so that affects the relationship of how colors react to each other and, and the, the, the play between them. Even if you're in painter and you've got the color mixer and all of that, it's not the same. It's not the same. There's a place for it. In production, absolutely, you should paint digitally. Um, I also think there's a lot to be said, and the same with charcoal. There's a lot to be said for not having an undo button. Yeah, I know it's scary. Trust me, there are times I would like to control Z after I put a line down, but unfortunately, well, fortunately, we don't have that. I do think it's a fortunate rather than an unfortunate. Um, it, because the other thing with painting, also painting traditionally, it really forces you to think about the mark that you're making rather than just knowing, well, if it's not right, I can undo. You shouldn't paint by, tri by trial and error waiting to get lucky, right? Like, you, oh, that doesn't work, undo. That one, oh, that doesn't work, undo. Much better to work traditionally and where you have to be super deliberate about each, each line that you put down. I need to grab my other board, which is luckily right here because we are going into landscape mode for this one. Chill Art Talks says, how's it going? It's going good, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's going good. Uh, have you ever listened to lo-fi music while drawing? We listen to lo-fi music on this channel a lot, I think, maybe too much. Um, yeah, absolutely. I like things generally when I'm drawing or when I'm working. I like music without vocals. That much I do now. What angle do you have the board at? Thanks. Um, I honestly couldn't tell you. That I, I, you see, here's the thing. If I was just drawing without having to draw for camera, I would literally just take the board lean it on my lap and on the table in front, and then kind of scoot back until the angle felt right. If I had to guess, this is probably about a 30 degree angle, I would imagine. Um, I never measured it. I built, and I can show you really quickly what I built here. And the only reason I built this was so I had something consistent for camera. Right? It's not because this would be my preferred method or anything. But I built this little back on the thing, right? Um, and it just means that every time I know, see, 
it's back right back where it should be and its relationship to the camera means that you're seeing it roughly straight down. But if I'm just drawing, like if I was in a figure drawing class, I would either lean against a stool in front, or a chair in front, or the table, if there's a table, and I, as I said, I just put the board on my lap, lean it on the table. I'd even do that here if I wasn't, you know, because actually where this is is not quite perfect from, from my comfort. It's great for the camera's comfort, but it wouldn't be my perfect um, angle or anything, you know, if I was not drawing on camera. Um, oh, you're cool. Uh, I get it. Um, yeah, I can't listen to voices. It's weird. Um, and also, just one last thing about boards. Please don't go to the art supply store to get them. Go to the hardware store. You'll get this quarter-inch MDF. You'll get four boards out of a sheet for what you'll pay for one board at an art store. And it's a really good idea to have multiple boards. You will use them. I've got like three or four going right now with different, uh, with different things on them or different things going on. It's really, really useful. All right. So this pose is going to be tricky. Um, the camera and we appreciate the angle. Yeah, you know, it's, all, it's a tricky one because, you know, there's nothing more frustrating in my mind than watching an art tutorial or watching someone draw and the camera's off to the side and you're seeing a distorted version. The problem with this is I have to draw somewhat unnaturally to try and avoid my head going under the camera like this. Or I can't really rotate the board. Sometimes it'd be really handy just to be able to rotate it slightly to get in on an angle. I'm kind of stuck with this thing, you know, being rigid. But you know, it's what it is. Have you done woodwork in the past? I've done some very base, very, very basic woodwork. Like, but just, you know, nothing, nothing that, um, Nothing you'd pay for. <laughs> Just, you know, house stuff when you have to. I built a couple of rooms, like studded out walls and that kind of thing. And so, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid of a skill saw, but I'm not, I would not consider myself a woodworker by any stretch. But I can make something basic like this, right? Um, hi from Mexico City. Hi, Irma. Buenos dias. Um, I had to rip the hinges off an art supply board. They get really got in the way. Yeah, exactly. Like, what's the point, right? Just go to the hardware store. And they'll even, they'll rip it for you. They'll, they'll cut it, you know? Um, and you buy one sheet probably for under 10 bucks. They'll cut it into four and you've got like, you've got four drawing boards. It's awesome. Hello from Iran. Zara, greetings. Hope you're okay over there. Hope all is good. All right, let's um, reset the clock. Um, <laughs> buenos dias. Muy bien. Okay, that's the extent of my Spanish, so let's stop there, right, before I get carried away and make it embarrassing. Okay, reset the clock. So, this is a complex enough pose in some ways, right? Um, let's see what we can do. Shoulder line, gonna start off very light. Because we've got some really interesting, got some really interesting angles for shortening. There's a lot going on here. It's a really interesting pose. Obviously, for those of you who have the reference, it makes sense. For most of you who don't, my drawing isn't going to make sense for a while. Um, I'm just finding that this is the spine coming down to gluteus coming down this way. 
We're kind of looking, for those who are wondering, we're kind of looking three-quarter view down. It's not quite three-quarter, but close. Um, but this is one of those kind of drawings where this is going to be a certain amount of mapping out that is required before we can get into the fun stuff. Really love the relationship between the upper torso and the lower torso and how the mass of the upper torso is relating. Super fascinating. Occipital ridge is about here, I would guess. So yeah, we've got foreshortening, we've got stacked forms here, and we've got a, you know, quite a contortious, is that a word, contortious pose? Um, T2, we were talking about the relationship between the shoulders, right, earlier. You can see that acromion process, right, sitting right here, and then the scapula kind of coming this way and coming down the back here and then coming across. So you can see the acromion process, spine of the scapula, scapula coming down. You can start to get a sense, you can even get a sense of where the clavicle would be kind of coming up and connecting to that, right? Okay, this arm going down in this direction and coming back up and the hand is coming out about here. This other arm, head of the humerus is about here. This arm is going down this way. Right hand is doing something like that. Okay, that will do us for now. Elbow. Once again, we talked we talked about this earlier too, didn't we? Um, and the relationship between the how these things connect to each other. This scapula is pushed back, right? So this scapula is sitting about here. This one's here. Sorry, I'm just having to analyze what it is I'm looking at. Okay, head of the scapula, or the ridge of the scapula is about here, but this one is pushing in this direction. Something like that, complex. Okay. Brachioradialis overlapping. And the, we can see the bicep sitting there, and obviously tricep sitting in here. Let's find a rib cage, right? So we know it's here at this point here. This is pretty much where the rib cage kind of the, the lower portion of it. We can see it sitting in here. It's kind of sitting in there in that region. I know it just looks must look so weird for those who don't have the reference. Then if the rib cage being there, the, the breast is coming off the rib cage, kind of sitting in this area here, something like that. It's one of those I have to kind of just stop every moment and figure out what it is that I'm looking at. Okay, so the 
sacrum is here. And then Bartok is coming down this way, Gluteus sitting in there. Rib cage. This leg going away from us, sitting about there. Knee is actually about there, I think. So I'm going to push this all down a bit. And this is going to sit here. This leg is coming down. Rib cage. That'll do us for now, it's a placeholder. So much going on that we just kind of need to, you know, one thing at a time. So that scapula is sitting there. But then we can see, okay, so sacrum is here. We know iliac crest is going around this way. And we can kind of see the oblique sitting here. Then we can see gluteus medius sitting in here and then coming down in this area. This is the hardest pose of the session, though, just for those drawing along who are freaking out. Um, OK, so then this leg is coming out, kind of going away from us, right? It's coming down this way, going in this direction. But then the calf is very much kind of coming towards us. This way, you see that's almost going like that. Yeah. All right, we're getting there. Mapping is happening. Um, heel of the foot is about here foot going down that way. All right. Cool. So, tricep is sitting about here and coming down to the elbow. Deltoid is about here, coming up, and then going around to the front of the form. Sitting in there. All right, good. Forearm. Coming up to the wrist. Yeah, a chromium process is sitting about there, and we can see like this trapezius sitting in there. All right. Something like that. 
crazy. So we can see a little bump of the clavicle coming from the front of the form sitting there. The ear is about there and here. Head going off this screen there and off the page. All right, I think I'm fairly satisfied, at least with enough to now move forward with a little bit more certainty. Um, all right, let's let's move on to stage two. Got some now, now we can get now we've got this out of the way because here's the problem: when you get a pose that's got a lot going on mechanically like this, it's very hard to find. Apart from like here, it's very hard to find long gestural lines. So now, hopefully, we can find some of these longer rhythmical ideas in the in the anatomy. All right, that's kind of the idea anyway. So whenever I have a foreshortened pose that requires, you know, a lot of like, mechanical thinking, diagrammatical drawing, I just kind of I put the long gestural stuff on on hold for a minute while I I do the math so to speak. But now we can have a bit of more fun. We've got our biceps sitting in there. Hey, Jeffrey, how you doing? Um, you've arrived at the perfect time. Okay, let's find, we've got this beautiful scapular shape in here, which I want to at least try and uh, do some justice to. be easy, truth be told. Alright, that would be his placeholder for now. So I'm going to move over this arm just a tiny, tiny bit. Which I may not need to, let's see. Some lovely business going on in here, but we'll save that for the for the tonal pass. We've got this great compression here. 
Quake here, Radialis revealing itself right there. Yeah, Volvo, welcome to the party. So coming across the former, because there's such a subtle turn here, deltoid starts about here. So I didn't really want to start where, you know, the bicep is, so to speak, because this is such an important transition to me. It makes sense to kind of just separate them as two ideas. If that makes sense? Probably doesn't. Okay. Got compression there. Can actually even start to subdivide some of our flexors and extensors here. Very so very 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 subtle. Same thing with our our tricep coming up this way, meeting up with the deltoid, and then this whole area. Easiest coming down. Somewhere in there. I think we're gonna be going another ten on this one at least. It's just it's just what it requires. Hey Lulu, welcome. Okay, let's keep going here. Okay, then we have okay, iliac crest coming around. So we know that iliac crest is there. Oblique is starting probably about here. Again, I'm going to probably pull this leg down just a tiny bit further. I want this distance to be right between the bottom of the breast and the top of this leg because otherwise it's going to all get too bunched up, you know what I mean? So then we will. We will bring down the thickness of this. We'll, we'll pull down just a little bit. Somewhere in there. That'll do it. Okay, let's keep going. And that'll all tie in nicely. like that. Um, this pose requires a ritual sacrifice. Um, have another 10 minutes. Yeah, at least, I think. It's just it's very, it's just a very complex pose. And it's kind of like the long pose of the session. So I'm just going to take my time with it.
my group when I asked you all if there was one bit of advice, one video in particular that has helped you along your art journey, what was it, please? All right, I let the group, I let the group going at it. <laughs> Lulu says, Shia LaBeouf yelling at me aggressively, just do it. You know, I saw that literally just the other day. I don't know how old it is. Um, I forget, I saw it on another show. They were referencing it. That is a funny video. Dude, it's intense. But you know what? Maybe that's what people need. Or well, some people at least. I could see how that would motivate you. <laughs> or scare you, depending. He's an interesting character. I think he may get a bit of an unfair rap. I think he, I think he might be, a, he might be all right, Shia. Like sure, he's intense, but you know. Although I really know nothing about him, if truth be told. Okay, getting there. Yeah, heal. Now I'm kind of drawing off camera here, just a little bit, I think. But, oh, you guys can just about see that. And toes are about here. Chromium process is here. Let's try and explain the depth of this shoulder, right? Because we're really going from one plane to another there. So we want to kind of try and create that illusion. Then we have that thinning out again that we were talking about earlier. Right, like in the trapezius here, like there's this V-type idea, very, very subtle. It's kind of sitting in there. He committed, yes he did. Uh, do it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. Let's get Shear on the stream. Yeah, that's okay. That's the call out. Let's see if we can get him to come on here and impart some wisdom. <laughs> you imagine. All right. All right. So now I'm starting to think about. Now that I'm kind of satisfied where everything is, I'm starting to think about secondary anatomy, right? Like what, what can the image use to help either describe something or just bring visual interest in some way? Um, we've got this lovely area in here, which I really haven't done any justice to just yet. So I'm going to start thinking about these, these ideas. very complex lighting on this one. But I'm not 
not sure how you avoid it. Like we could go with a conceptual light model, then the question becomes which direction, right? Maybe this is better off staying somewhat diagrammatical. Let's see. I'm gonna, I'm getting close to calling it with this one. Deborah, ignore <laughs> Lulu's suggestion, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's it's really what you're you're referring to, if you know what I mean. Yeah, of course, Deborah, there's always the other uh, videos on my channel. risk of blatant self-promotion. But I think they've helped people. All right, let's see here. Yeah, I think we're, we're really close here, guys. What a fun pose. This one runs the risk of getting overcooked if I don't stop. So I think I'm going to uh, I'm going to call it. This is really what I would say pretty pretty much diagrammatical, but the inner diagrammatical parts are kind of serving as half tone. If that makes sense. Okay. <coughs> um, Ah, so which one do you think is the most informative of my videos, Deborah? Probably the figure drawing fundamentals one. If you go to my channel page, you just go to popular videos, it'll be the one, the most popular one. That one and the one where I, I it's called something like probably the most important lesson I'll ever give. I think those two, if I could only pick two to put in the, the time vault. Maybe those two. Um, all right, let's call it with this. That was fun drawing, half an hour. Gosh. The pose is pretty rad. A sketchbook full of three quarter standing pose with scoffs at it. Yeah, hold my beer standing pose. <laughs> that was fun. Um, okay, what we're gonna do Let's see, I think we've got, what, four more poses? We're going to speed things up a little, I think. We've got four more poses, and we've got just over half an hour. Um, although this repose is going to require a bit of work. Um, let's give it a 10. 
Let's try and speed, speed this up. Maybe the last one will be a five or something, or the last couple will be a five. All right. You know, I'll recommend a book to you, Deborah, but you might not be able to get it. It's the only anatomy book that I'm prepared to kind of recommend. Um, it's called Struttura Uomo. It's an Italian book, and they, it, it's not in English. But just the drawings alone in that book will, um, will give you a pretty good breakdown. Where is my copy? Um, is it up there? Struttura Uomo. Must be. Sorry, I'm looking for it. Yeah, there it is. Should I get it quickly? I have to do this without disconnecting my microphone. Uh. All right, very, very quick show and tell. Oh, that's great, Susan. Nice to hear. Um, this book. It really is just about the only anatomy book I'm prepared to, as I said, the only one I'm prepared to really recommend. If you want to learn anatomy, anatomy, I think there's better sources than art books. Um, this book is absolutely amazing. Unfortunately, can I, let me see if I can do something here just temporarily. Hopefully I'm not gonna regret doing this. Let's give it a go. Will it get bigger? No, it wants to get wider. Ah. All right, it's gonna be too much trouble. Really weird the way that you can't zoom in on OBS. No, sorry guys, all right. Um, What I like about this book is it's very, um, it breaks things down in a very, what's the word? Geometric, geometric way. It really gets into this, what the, the planes, how the planes kind of uh, relate to each other which then translates obviously to light and tone and then the mechanics you know we were talking about the shoulder girdle earlier this really is um, fantastically put together gorgeous book um, maybe I can zoom in quickly once again I'm prob oh no I can't sorry look for this book that's all I can say I believe there is JPEGs, or well not JPEGs, PDFs bouncing around online of this. I don't endorse or recommend that because it's taking away from the publishers. It, the one thing I will say though is it's a very, very hard book to get a hold of. Um, I have many books on art. If I can only take one to the space shuttle on my long-term journey. That's probably this one. So there you go. All right. Um, I just wish I could read Italian. I did even contemplate learning Italian for this book, but that felt a little excessive. Uh, <laughs> although I should probably learn Italian anyway, but that's a different question. It's on the Internet Archive, says Volvo. All right. I really disrupted. Don't apologize, Deborah. This is we go down rabbit holes on this on this stream sometimes. It's okay. It's nice. It's actually nice to have a quick break from drawing for just a minute. All right, the pose. Uh, the timer is set. Let's look at this pose. Okay, beautiful, 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 beautiful rhythmical ideas with her leg. So I really want to try, try at least capture that idea 
Let's see what we can do. Lower torso, upper torso. Our arm going down this way. Iliac crest sitting quite high, right? Sitting about there. This leg coming down this way. Coming down. Even the way the foot is angled, so lovely. Just doing something like that. I've probably drawn that leg way too long. I'm gonna leave it for now. Because you know what? It's such a showpiece. I'd, it's almost sooner make the upper torso a bit bigger to accommodate it. Okay, let's, so let's just go with it for now. Rib cage sitting in here. Scapula's about here. Arm, elbow. Yeah. All I want to do is draw this leg. I'm getting sidetracked. Um, I'm wanting to keep going back to it. Um, okay, let's see. This arm's coming down this way. Leg, other leg, sitting there, doing something like that. Fez fruitcake, I'll translate it for you. <laughs> thanks, yeah, that's quite the task, Yoga, thanks. Appreciate it. If you could have it to me by next week, that would be awesome. Uh, Fez says, how did you learn figure drawing to begin with? Um, you know, I started working, I actually started my drawing career working in animation. And it wasn't till I'd been working in animation for, frankly, for far too long before I actually started my figure drawing journey. Just in an attempt to try and improve my drawing for my craft. Um, and so study was kind of on again, off again to some degree or another, depending on how much downtime I had because downtime is a wonderful opportunity to sh hone or sharpen one's skills, and you know? So I would make a point when I was not working to uh, try and go to the animation union's figure drawing classes, which I did on and off for several years and then at some point it just felt like you know, I was just spending more and more time doing figure drawing so I just you know one of those things you just kind of say fall into almost 
to some degree, but it was always something that terrified me. You know, when I worked in animation, I knew it was something I needed to do to develop as an artist. And it scared the hell out of me. It felt so out of, I felt so out of my depth with it. Um, but you know, it was just one of those things. It's like, all right, well, let's get comfortable being uncomfortable. And uh, let's do this, which is kind of, you know, is how we're here today. But it's not easy. Drawing is not easy. And I don't think it's talked about enough, honestly, because it's like, you know, you see, you see the people's work that you admire and it's like, you know, sometimes it's hard to kind of quantify just how much practice has gone into it and all of that. So yeah. Um, <laughs> no problem, huh? Yeah. Uh, Discomfort equals growth. Yeah, I believe, I, I do believe it to, to some degree, a certain amount of discomfort, not so much discomfort that you're discouraged. Um, but you know, a small dose of discomfort each day is okay. We can all handle a small amount. Okay, so we'll find our knee. And then Achilles tendon. Heel. Where am I at? I've got only a minute to go. Don't really want to describe the other leg, but I feel like I need to at least give it a mention. So the calf probably starts about here, then it reveals itself about here. That's probably enough, that leg. Let's just get in a little bit of this shoulder.
Okay. Oh, we're at 11 minutes already. Okay. Let's move on. chance to focus more on the leg I have a problem with calf muscles um, Camille that's a very good question you've I, I wish I'd seen your um, your your message a little sooner and I could have been a little bit more descriptive about what it was that I was doing with it um, uh, what will we do You know, let's do, let's, um, let's create a teaser. I will, um, for next Monday session, I will, I will pick some, I will pick some poses where we, we, we examine that, all right, to some degree or another. Um, one thing I will say though, just generally, let's just talk about some, some generalities right now about the calf. Well, maybe they're not generalities, maybe they're specifics. Um, there's two heads to the calf, right? It's two, like there's a head here and a head here. And you see this subdivide, and this is a fascia that comes down and then kind of transitions into the Achilles tendon right there. The one thing I will say that's really important about calf or just in general with this idea is the sense of overlapping. Um, not starting and stopping forms at joints. Look at the way, like in, in, to some degree or another, the journey of this calf starts up here, right? And then we come down and then we continue down the leg. Because um, the calf, the, 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 the calf muscle is essentially attached to the, fe uh, to the femur, right above the knee. So, it, and if you could see the reference, uh, hopefully that would, that would be um, evident. So look, so one thing I think one of the, pro the problems is people tend to start the calf too low, where it actually starts, it, it starts a good bit higher. The other thing is this area in here, there's a tendency to want to do a bulbous form for the calf here, and then to kind of taper in this way. This mass of the, the, this fascia coming across the form here, um, that creates its own volume and its own mass, right? So what you end up with is actually a secondary idea as you move down into the leg. I also think it's useful with the calf to not only understand the muscle itself, but the muscles around it um, and their relationship to each other. Now, you don't need to go crazy with it. But if you can understand the large ideas, that might be useful. But as I said, Monday, I'm going to make a note to myself. Okay, I'm going to make a note down here. Calves. Calf Monday. Now, I'll see that. You can't see that. But I'll see that note, and I will, um, I'll make a point. Maybe legs. We'll look at legs in detail on Monday. How about that? Front and back. That'd be a bit of fun. The knee as well is fascinating. One of my favorite things to draw. Um, all right, we have 18 minutes. And we have three more poses. Conte Calf Monday, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, so 
Camille, if you don't if you don't see the stream live on Monday, um, check back and you'll see that we, we will drop legs from a plethora of angles. So it's going to be leg Monday. All right. We'll I'll talk a bit about anatomy and overall large ideas and knees. Knees are my favorite. OK. Let's do a five minute pose. Five, six minutes. Yeah, can't take half Monday. <laughs> I like it. Um, anatomy so hard that no one spares time to draw calves. Yeah, but you know, I think it's. I think there's something to be said for that. Actually, I don't think people really understand how to draw knees either. Um, but they're really not that difficult. You just need to understand a little bit of basic anatomy and your knees will certainly be so much more interesting to look at. Um, all right, five minutes. leg is shooting back this way it's really cool and kind of coming towards us so I always think about the you know I think about okay I've got the hamstring sitting in here I always think then okay that knee is kind of start or that calf is kind of starting here even the front of the calf, people want to like put a curve on it, but there's there's muscle on the front of the tibia as well. Um, you know, it's kind of mirror imaging to meant to much to many. Okay, use your words, Richard. It's very much <coughs> mirroring what's going on with the uh, forearm. shifting gears from slower poses to quick. And this leg is, or this arm is going down, kind of like that, sitting on this, resting on this box type thing. Yeah, look at that elbow, guys. That right there has got a lot going on. Yeah, calves, Monday, or legs. And maybe we'll do focus on arms on Thursday. Maybe that's what we should do. Just to kind of mix it up a little, you know? I think that'd be fun. So this other arm is just hidden behind the form because it's coming across this way. And it's one of those things, I'm really, like, in the reference, we can just kind of see the hand revealing itself here. I think I'll have to put that on. I don't like to, but otherwise it just looks like she's, she's had an accident. Um, Thank you. 
Oof, very low on time. Tension and then all right. So five, six. <coughs> Excuse me. Is it necessary, Asara, to have to, to know muscles for figure drawing? Um, it definitely helps to know the large ideas, Zara. But here's the thing: I don't think, in my opinion, I don't think you need to go nuts with it. I, you can, like, you know, we can all jump down that rabbit hole, but I would say this, there's a few large ideas that you'll get a lot of mileage out of, right? And if you understand those large ideas, and when I say large ideas, I'm talking about things like general placement of the rib cage, some, some kind of um, landmarks of, of, the, um, of the hips, you know, this type of thing. If you can understand like five or six of these large ideas and how things relate to each other, you get an awful lot of mileage out of that, unless you really want to go into a deep, a deep dive on it. So, I'm not, I, I think it's very easy to get intimidated by the enormity of what is learning anatomy, right? And I'm, I try to be really conscious of that when I'm teaching. Um, and as I said, I try and teach the most important things first. Then we can get into that, you know, that tiny little muscle that sits between the bicep and the tricep, right? Like, but, but understanding we have a bicep and a tricep first is really what matters, right? Then you can, you can subdivide and subdivide and subdivide, depending the depth. I would also say what matters a lot is do you want to do figurative art or do you want to be a character designer for animation? Because if you want to be a character designer for animation, guess what? You probably only need to know those large ideas and you'll get, you'll get a long way with, without knowing heaps of anatomy. It can never hurt, but if your time is precious or of a premium, then you know, you, you, you pick your battles, right? Um, you know, I wouldn't want to try and impose m my degree of kind of study of these things on other people um, unless they had actual use for it. If you want to be a figurative artist and that's how you want to kind of find your way in life, yeah, why don't you just spend, spend a year or so just kind of going deep on the subject. Um, but you don't have to, not, not initially. In fact, initially, I'd, enc I'd encourage you not to. Because here's the thing, you could, be, you could be a bloody surgeon and be terrible at figure drawing, right? Like, it, 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 understanding anatomy is only one piece of the puzzle. How are you gonna apply that knowledge? That's as important as the understanding of it, frankly. Um, You know, if, if all it came down to was an understanding of anatomy, every, every doctor out there would be the next Michelangelo. It's, it's not, it, it's just one piece of the puzzle. Application of understanding is, another, is a, a large thing. She's holding onto a stick here, which is kind of going down in this direction. 
um, application. You could get you could get by with very, very few ideas on anatomy, but a great sense of style in your drawing. Um, it all just kind of depends on what it is that you want to do, what it is that you want to say. In saying all of that, I find it's a fascinating subject, to a, to a degree. Um, and for me, at least, it was a journey and time that was well worth spending. So it really just comes down to what you want to do. Yeah, you're very welcome. Okay, we can see where the rib cage meets up with the pelvis, right in this area here. And there's our five, which is over. Chris, what's up? We are almost done. Last pose coming up. And we're almost, we, look at that. We're only going to be a couple of minutes out over schedule. Not bad for all the sidetracking we did. OK, last pose. I deliberately picked a nice easy one for us for the end. See, you're welcome. You're welcome. So I need to find a pencil. Oof. All right, we're good to go. Let me reset the clock. Quick sip of tea. Let's do it, guys. Cinco minutos.
bit of a fun pose to finish on. Simple. Well, you know, relatively. It's all relative, right? Pectoral. every time And there's our five. We made it. Yeah, you make a good point, Lulu. Um, welcome to all the, the people that are just finding the stream for the first time and all of that. Um, you're very welcome. Uh, good to have you along. And for those of you wondering, if you haven't already figured it out, um, if you become a member, then you will have access to the reference that we use for each one of these sessions and you can draw along, um, which is a bit of fun. So this happens twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays. There was a promise of additional, you know, pop-up streams. I've just been just too busy the last week or two to do them, but it is my intention. Um, but the Mondays and Thursday streams are locked and loaded. They, they are guaranteed unless something terrible happens, which hopefully isn't the case. Um, so yeah, we meet at five o'clock um, London time, GMT, 5 p.m. Um, on Monday and Thursdays. So always good to have, to see new faces or to see them on the chat and uh, you're very welcome. Um, T2 says, uh, 
Oh, let's not let's not end on a negative note, Tito. Yeah, general's quality control is up and down. Yep, scratchy draw, scratch, scratchy pencils. I bought five boxes of scratchy pencils from Generals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's bad. I agree. Um, they're just not consistent, unfortunately. Um, and we discuss things like that, many other things on this stream twice a week. <laughs> and uh, you get to hear me rant about Generals pencils. All kinds of things. The state of the art world. Haven't really got into that too much. It's coming. Um, anyway, never held a scratchy Conte. Wow, Volvo, do you work for Conte? You're really, you're really pushing Conte today. You know, I, Conte, in my opinion, suffer from a similar issue find them a little scratchy. It's one of the reasons you won't see me use Conte on the stream. Yeah, it's true, true facts. Um, folks, that was a nice fun session, right? I think we, we had some nice poses there. They were relatively straightforward for the most part. We needed that after Monday's session, which almost broke me. Um, but next Monday, legs, 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 and more legs. Um, we will look at them, we will examine them, we will do a deep dive to one degree or another. I might even pull out some anatomy stuff to share with you guys. Um, so with all of that said, you know the drill. Please do me a favor, hit the like button on your way out, and most importantly, look after yourselves and have a fantastic weekend, and I will see you all next week. All right. Cheers, take care, bye.